So, in between proteome comparisons, uh, we compare the proteomes from different organisms with one another. So, in this way, we can find the genes uh, which are which are similar between those those organisms. We call them as orthologous genes. So, um, here what we do is uh, we take the proteome as a query and we do a database similarity search against another proteome or there can be the whole database where we can have the set of proteomes. Um, if, if proteome is not available, we can search against EST which are express sequence tags. Um, we can use those databases also. So, as I said earlier, so this uh, help us finding the orthologous genes. Uh, we can find the gene families and we can find the domains between different uh, different uh, organisms. So, proteons, uh, proteins with highly significant alignment scores, um, they can be called as or suspected as orthologs. Mostly the proteins related to core biological functions, uh, the basic function of life, uh, they are, uh, most of them they are orthologs. How can we find true orthologs? Uh, there is a technique in which we call it as method one. Uh, we have reciprocal hits. Uh, in reciprocal hits, you take uh, one arg uh, organism at a time as a query and search against the other as a database. So then you flip around and take first as uh, database and the second one as query. So if you are getting the similar end results, so same genes are correlated with one another are highly uh, similar to one another, we can keep them as uh, as the best hits. And uh, we can also apply some uh, criteria on it. For example, here we can do a e-value cutoff. When we do BLAST, uh, BLAST gives us a parameter called as e-value. Lower is good. Uh, we will talk about BLAST algorithm later on. But here uh, we just uh, the point or the message of this uh, slide is that we can do some e-value cutoff and we can return, retain those uh, gene pairs in those reciprocal hits. So, for example, here we say that if a e is less than 0.01, we can retain them. Same way while we are doing BLAST, uh, since it's a local search tool uh, where uh, we can compare different regions among us, different uh, uh, genes or proteins and we look for matches between between different regions. So, sometimes uh, both proteins are not much covered in the alignment. So, we want to have uh, at least some coverage criteria. So, here we have like for example, 60 percent coverage. So, uh, we keep those match paired sometimes normally at very conservative or very low p-values, maybe like 10 power minus 10 or 10 power minus 100. So, in this way while we are doing that, uh, we can group those organisms which are similar to one another. We can call them as uh, clusters of orthologous groups or COGs. So, orthologs uh, since they are believed to be derived from common ancestors, so they might also have paralogs. So, within the organisms, the orthologs might also go into duplications, uh, but orthologs can be studied as COGs. So, here uh, we have the examples. Uh, we are having uh, orthologs between yeast and worms. We have different P cutoffs. Then we can have the total number of uh, groups. So, we have those at different cutoffs. If we, we go on stringent criteria, we have less common orthologous groups. So, if we relax them, uh, we have more. And then we have number of groups with more than two members here. And then the percentage of yeast how many among the total they are present. So, they are uh, presented in these two groups. So, say we have 40 percent at this criteria and we have 19 percent at this criteria, um, this 10 power minus 10. So, that remains to 5 percent and 2 percent if our criteria is strict. So, in this way we can group the similar proteins and at different cutoffs of p-values uh, we can have different results. So, sometimes we uh, take those proteomes and we, we take those uh, proteomes and uh, we match them or we align them with express sequence tags uh, which are cDNA copies of messenger RNAs and for organisms uh, we do that for those organisms whose genomes uh, sequences are not available. So, we can uh, do this. So, EST are single DNA reads. So, mostly they are 3 prime bytes. So, since we get them from messenger RNA and uh, messenger RNA extraction protocols, they rely on uh, getting those messenger RNA by using their 3 prime um, poly A tail on their 3 prime end. So, that is why they are kind of more 
tilted or oriented toward uh, three primes. ESTs mainly um, they are they are extracted from three prime ends most of the time. So maybe we can have uh, incomplete ESTs um, because it depends upon gene expression. So if we don't have genomes, rather if we have ESTs, we might be biased towards only those genes which are expressed. Uh, the, the software or the package in BLAST which is used is TBLASTN for this purpose. Uh, proteins, uh, they are organized into domains. So their uh, domains are uh, specific arrangements of amino acids. Uh, so these are the structures, the units of structures. And domain comparisons, sometimes they are correlated with their biological functions. So here, for example, we take the domains from different proteins and we put into some domain databases. And then in the end, we can come up with shared domains, the domains uh, which are present in these uh, different groups and then we can correlate this information to have their uh, idea about their functions. So proteome comparison helps finding orthologs, uh, gene families and protein domains and domain comparisons uh, can also help correlate to the biological functions.